Now the voice of the Hoosiers, a busy, busy man this weekend, Don Fisher. How are you, Don? I know uh, with an incredible, not just a, a big football game Saturday, it was a big environment. And you add that to the, the basketball game on Sunday, just a ton of travel, all that went into leading up to the football game last week. There was that in and, in and of itself was just a, a lot of energy and uh, very, very busy. I know it's uh, hard on on you like it is the rest of us, but uh, it helps when you're calling winners, brother. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about that. And we got to call two wins this past weekend, which is really cool. And obviously it started with a football game and Kurt Signetti's team is just continuing to amaze in so many ways uh, against a, a good Washington ball club to, to win that game in dominant fashion. Once again, uh, 31 points in the scoreboard, uh, but that's the lowest total that Indiana's had offensively this year, along with the Florida International Ball game. So, this is an Indiana football team, despite who's at the quarterback spot or uh, despite any of the negative things that can happen in a football game. This team is able to overcome all of those, and I'm just so impressed with what this program has become. Yeah, and uh, you know, put aside, I think by now most people with with Kurt Signetti understand that. He, most of what he's doing is is on purpose. Uh, a, B, it's with confidence. It's not, you know, everyone outside can think of the cockiness or whatever. But uh, he he in the way he one of the ways he reminds me of Bob Knight is he's doing this stuff on purpose. And then talking to a lot of former players, they'll say, you know, if you go back and look at the the game face and all that stuff he, he did Knight did during the when the tournament was to take the attention off of the players so they were more relaxed. And I think Signetti has done a, a great job of this because he's having to manage all of these incredible expectations that are now coming from the fans, from the media, and there's no way, it's human nature, that that doesn't sink in to the players if it's not caught and managed and I'll tell you, that may be the thing he's done the best job at is keeping these guys grounded and because they're playing every week with that same chip on their shoulder and putting out the same performance Saturday after Saturday. Well, and that's a true statement. There's no question. Uh, and I, I don't think it's uh, something that is new to him. I think he understands that you he's got a system. He's got a philosophy. All those things come into play here uh, and how he goes about his stuff. He is, he hasn't changed it. Um, he told me, and I, I think I mentioned this before that, uh, that he learned more about how to run a football program in the four years he was with Nick Saban in his last assistant coaching position uh, than anybody else that he had worked with. And uh, he has that system down now he's got, the way he wants to go about his business, he keeps guys as grounded as any football coach I've ever seen uh, or any coach period I've ever seen. And Bob Knight was the same way. It, it kept players grounded. You know, he just didn't let you get too high. And in Kurt's case, he says, I don't want my guys to be too high. I don't want them to be too low. I want them to be even keeled. And he said, I want them to be focused on every single play. And that means the last play, whatever you did a good job or a bad job on it, if you're still in the lineup, you've got to focus on the next play. And I just think his approach and the things that he tries to do, those things haven't changed since he became a head coach. He, is, he has got a system, and that system has shown to be nothing but exceptional. And let's talk about this defense, man. They just show up every week, and they set the tone in this game and took some pressure off of the offense when right. with that pick six by uh, D'Angelo Pons right off the bat, and then they had an incredible, incredible acrobatic second pick that he made. I mean, dude has got to be up there for defensive player of the week in the Big Ten. That was spectacular on, on both counts. Right. Uh, and and that's just the that's just a small part of what's going on here, because every everything about this football team, every piece that is a part of this program comes into play. And it did in this ball game, special teams as well uh, with the with the uh, return. Um, Justice Ellison was spectacular in this contest. 
uh, in the way he ran the football, but everybody played their part. And the offensive line this year, I mean, what Bob Bostad has done with this uh, offensive line uh, is amazing because these guys, uh, two or three of these guys, Mike Katie Carter Smith, those guys are, are they're, they're not brand new guys. They've been around the block, so to speak. But uh, you've got Drew Evans, who's playing a lot of football right now as a starter. Uh, you've got Wedding, who comes in here from Wisconsin. He is playing a lot. Both those guys are from Wisconsin, by the way. But Evans was here a year ago. Um, and so you've got you've got so many pieces that just play out this complimentary game of football, helping uh, if the offense is going well or the offense or the defense is, uh, has a, a bad play, the offense picks them up. If the if the offense has a bad play, the defense picks them up. It is such a great and fun thing to watch how this ball club plays together and becomes that it's the true it's the true uh, description of team. Uh, and that's what I like most about it, because this is a team. It is in a, truly in the sense of the word. Across the board. I, I've never seen any, personally, I've never seen anything like it because I've never gotten to cover a, a, a football team this good, this complete. I mean, they are They're You're right. They're their Their offense when it went all completely healthy is as good as that defense. And both sides are pretty damn good. Uh, we're talking top five on both sides. Uh, Indiana defense probably took a little hit this weekend uh, with the the points and whatnot, but it doesn't matter. They are still they're a, a an upper top ten defense. There are probably only three or four schools now that have both of those, right. and the other three or so they're rate ranked in the top five, six, seven, uh, and I don't care about where Indiana's ranked at the moment because those rankings don't mean diddly. They just have to keep winning. And that's and, and they'll take care of their own business. Uh, right. And that's how I think fans need to look at it. But enjoy this ride. And for you, what has it been like? Because, yeah, you were there during the Mallory era as well. And you got to see the Holiday Bowl win as well. But right. this what Saturday's environment, I know you were busy working, but the environment outside, there, there's no way that there's ever been anything like that uh, <laughs> on the IU campus before. There were so many people there. They can't set a an attendance record because i uh, the of uh, what the seat the uh, stadium seats now at 526 you know you get up to 53 but 56 is the record they can't reach that until they grow the stadium but i promise you there was more people on campus than it ever at any time in, in iu's football history it had to be the case it was wild and great well the espn thing was uh game day was phenomenal uh it looked, and I, I didn't get to see much of it. I was in the, I just went over to watch it on foot uh, early on. I couldn't get even close to the stage. I couldn't see anything. So I was looking at that big screen that was out there, but I couldn't hardly get through the crowd myself. Every time I turned around, somebody's yelling at me. Uh, but it was amazing. It was so much fun uh, to be in that facility, uh, around the facility itself, to see that many people, it looked like 20,000 were behind the, the dais. Um, it was just a phenomenal crowd, to say the least. But the most important thing about what's happened here is what has happened to the fan base, how excited they are now, how important football has become to them. And obviously, you hope that one win doesn't or one loss doesn't uh, change any of that because this is a, a football team right now that still has to face the toughest portion of their schedule. And, and yeah, uh, Michigan State is up next. You're on the road. But Michigan State's a good football team. And Jonathan Smith has really done a nice job of turning that program around. Even though they lost this past weekend and now they're just 4-4, four and four, they are a physically tough football team. And Indiana will have its hands full this coming weekend uh, because this Michigan State ball club can play. There's no doubt about it. Their quarterback – is just a freshman, and he is talented. Um, so it's going to be fun to see how Indiana performs again. Another game, and the pressure keeps building now a little bit. I mean, I don't know how coaches handle that. I think Signetti has certainly a way to do that. Um, the buildup for every game now is just bigger and bigger. And you, at this point, all you hope is that they can handle that. And I don't think there's any doubt that they will because I think Kurt Signetti is that kind of coach. He keeps these guys in check all the time. 
Absolutely. IU basketball with a, uh, although it was not a real, uh, doesn't count. It, it matters to a lot of people. Yesterday, they go down to Knoxville, take on the 12th ranked Tennessee Volunteers, come away with a 66-62 road win. <laughs> that is just huge. For, uh, that's got to be a gigantic confidence boost for the team, the fans, everything. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, the one thing, I mean, the, the one guy that really impressed, I think, yesterday was Miles Rice. I think this kid uh, came in here. He was highly touted, of course, from Washington State. He was the player of the year in the Pac-12. He was a freshman, a freshman player of the year, I should say. Um, and he, he performed. I mean, this guy played, I think, what, 31 minutes or so, something like that, uh, 31-20. Uh, it was 7-14 of in the field, 20 points in the ball game, four assists, no turnovers, uh, and played against their point guard, who was one of the, the really key guys in the SEC, one of the best players in the SEC at the point guard spot, Zakai Ziegler, held him to 2 of 10 in the shooting department. Um, I mean, there, this guy is talented, and he he gives Indiana something they haven't had for a while, a guy that you could count on. Uh, and here's the other thing. Uh, Malik Renu had 21 in the game. He led the scoring. He had eight rebounds. But here's what I liked about Malik. Malik in this ball game, I think, played as hard as he has in any point, at any point last season or the year before. I think he's in the best shape of his life. And I think he has become a leader on this basketball team. I, I love what I'm seeing from Malik Renu. Uh, the other guys that that, uh, uh, that performed yesterday, Balo, I think, did a great job on the boards, obviously. He played 32 minutes in the game. That's the most yeah. minutes he's probably played in a while. Um, oh, yes. he, he, and I'm sure he was tired at the end of it, but uh, I thought he did a nice job. And I, they they – the other thing Mike Woodson did yesterday, he played different lineups. He, he played a small lineup on several occasions. He played Ballo and Renew together uh, at times. Uh, he was experimenting, and that's what you're supposed to be doing in these exhibition games early on, as well as the you know some of the lesser games that you're going to be playing in non-conference play. So uh, I just I like what I saw on this basketball team in the first time out. They take on a Tennessee ball club that's. A, I think they're 13th ranked in preseason, and they're expected to be one of the top three teams in the SEC this year. So uh, it was not a schlock game that they played yesterday, and they were able to do it on the road. And no team in this game led by more than six points in the game. It was back and forth the entire day. And the second half was a much better game than the first half because there was so much sloppiness in that first half of this contest. But in the second half, they got down to business, and it was really important, and it was really special. It was a fun game to broadcast, especially in the second half. But you're going to have to rest your voice, especially with Indiana football being undefeated. That is going to continue. You're going to you're going to do the most football games in a season of your career. I'm pretty <laughs> confident. And if this basketball team is continuing to perform perform like this, that is also going to uh, buff it up the excitement as well. And whoo, get ready, brother. Those vocal cords are going to get a test this season. Well, you know what? Uh, that's what I'm here for. That's my job. Yeah. And everybody loves it. Don Fisher, the voice of the Hoosiers. Uh, Don, we'll see you later on at the presser. Thank you so much, brother. Get some rest. Thank you. See you.